Good morning, it's Wednesday the 7th of August. I thought I'd do a brief video about um, my plumbing installation and setup because once um, this is all boxed in and the uh, kitchen furniture is put back in place it's not going to be easy to film it. Um, so I'm about 80% uh, complete now as far as the plumbing and drainage is concerned. Um, Pretty much got everything in place that I need to. All the holes are drilled in the van except for the shower tray which I'm about to start installing. But very briefly, um, my original design concept was always to have an inboard water tank. We're going to be using this van, I suspect, more for winter use than summer use. The other van will become the summer van for longer journeys. I didn't want um, any risk of the water tanks freezing on the outside. Didn't want to mess about with um, electric heaters and things. So I've installed a water tank on top of the wheel arch that I repaired in a previous video. And this is strapped in with uh, ratchet straps and I'm going to be putting another one across lengthwise as well. Um, it sits on a sheet of one inch insulation um, directly on top of the wheel arch. The insulation is really there, A, to cushion the tank so that it straps down nicely, and B, to manage any condensation between that and the wheel arch. Um, the whole lot's glued, screwed, bolted through the floor. It's very, very secure. Um, I had originally bought, well, I had a 125 litre tank that's going in the crafter. I did think about trying to fit in here, but it was not practical. Once I realised all the ancillaries that needed to go in everywhere else, it wasn't practical. So what we have over here is the filler. I'd like to put the filler higher, um, but already that's, on the outside of the van, that's already quite high. Um, so the filler's in there. The neck of the filler is at a slight angle, but the thing protrudes into a vehicle a long, long way. And I'm quite lucky that I've still got this bulkhead here, because I was able to actually use that void to bend the... Uh, pipe over enough so that when I come to put some timber, uh, sorry, panelling across this back here, because the panelling will cover, the, will hide where the um, drain pipes and the pipes of the taps are going to go and everything else, um, that will also lose that filler pipe and the uh, breather pipe as well. The blue thing is a 2 litre expansion tank. Um, these can be mounted vertically or horizontally. Um, I had intended to try and put it all in one place on the right, which I'll show in a minute, but it was getting difficult. So that is over there, um, in amongst of my um, heater pipes. And I have specifically and intentionally run the heater pipe under the tank through to the shower, because that will provide a small degree of heating to the water, again, to offset any freezing, and so on and so forth. And to the right, what we have is a sure flow pump, various um, bits of leftover plumbing articles I've got um, from my spares bin, push fit fittings, a um, couple of drain valves because obviously draining uh, the system down in the winter is going to be very, very um, necessary. You'll notice that uh, I've got a T piece. You can just about see it where that blue tap is. So the T-piece there with um, a connecting pipe that goes back to the expansion tank. And that's actually um, a pipe, um, a washing machine filler pipe. It fits perfectly, so I'm making use of it. Um, the large canister in the centre there is an NSA carbon water filter. That's going to be providing our drinking water, or it will go to the tap in the uh, sink. Um, it was something that was recommended by Richie on Beyond the Van. He was actually doing a build and he had one of these and I thought, that's handy. Um, I bought three on eBay by pure luck or accident um, not long after. Somebody was, I think I paid £10 for all three of them. Um, it's designed to sit on the countertop, which is why it's got that little um, odd shaped bent outlet but I didn't want to waste space on the countertop plus it didn't really come with a fitting kit I've made um, 
I've made a set of uh, legs for it that are bolted to the floor out of a couple of stainless steel brackets used for um, tying. If anyone's done any brickwork, whenever you're bonding, um, you can buy a, a metal frame system that you use to bond a wall together uh, when you're joining a wall end on adding a new wall. Um, and that's what these metal brackets are from. It's, they're just very relatively thin, but they're strong. Um, three of those legs, one Jubilee clip, and that's not going anywhere. Um, and then a um, bit of 10mm pipe from it up to the tap, job done. And that's good for about 30,000 litres. That'll last us three or four years in this van if we have this van long enough. And it just allows me to provide that extra degree of safety when um, drawing water off of this tank. This tank's a 60 litre tank, by the way, and so I did have a 125 litre tank. It, it fitted in theory, but I wouldn't have got all these bits and pieces in. Um, what else is down there? Then to the right, let's just move the camera around a bit. Not connected up there, but there is my uh, drain out through the floor uh, for the sink waste. Um, I've got a filter for the sure flow pump um, and a drain off tap. Um, not very impressed with that drain off tap. It, it came from the same supplier as this water tank. It's the, the, the fitting is not very clever. I may replace it with something else. But I thought it'd be. I had a bit of a brainwave. I've cut a fairly large hole in the floor and I've used a clear piece of tubing to slide up the drain tap when required. That's temporary. The other purpose of that hole is to allow me to um, stick a bit of hose down when I come to drain the, the water system down as well. But also, that's going to be one of my drop vents for gas. Because um, there will be a gas pipe in here, that's, that's going to be one of the last things I put in. Uh, the gas pipe to the cooker and the water heater. So I'm going to use that as a drop vent, even though there's no gas appliances here. It's just another place for a drop vent and I've got one under the cooker as well. Um, so that's a very, very brief overview of what I've done with the plumbing um, in this van. Um, I had intended to put a lot of these ancillaries on the back wall of the shower room. A back wall there. You can just see we've got quite a nice gap between the, um, the rear wall of the shower and the back door of the van. But I couldn't quite get the shower room small enough to give me sufficient space in the back there for originally I was going to put the gas water heater in there and all these other fittings as well. I needed about another two and a half inches and that would have made the shower room just that much narrower. And both Karen and I are not as slim as we used to be so being able to get in and out of the this room um, comfortably was more important. So compromise, all the plumbing is now around the wheel arch and uh, I'm quite happy with that actually, it's made the installation a lot easier, it's a lot neater. I've just installed up the top there, um, I've got a, I'm going to probably carpet this, this door doorway, I've actually built the door yesterday. Um, I've just fitted up there a couple of um, vents, because we're going to be heating the shower room and because we've got a composting toilet, we uh, well I say composting toilet, a fancy bucket basically um, with a urine diverter. I wanted to be able to draw air into the shower room when the doors close and also because the the large electric extractor fan is in there as well and that will need a, an airflow. These two plastic grills are soffit vents, 75 pence each from a local builders merchant. Um, 72 mil hole for them, hole saw. I've literally just put them in um, about 10 minutes ago one of those, so I bought four of those, three pounds, bargain, um, and that gives good ventilation through, not only just as an extract for the shower room, but also because we're using that fan for blowing air into the into the room, and also when Karen's cooking we might have that fan going as well, so it provides a way of pulling air through. I'm not sure how efficient it will be as far as extracting from where we are now, um, and I may eventually do away with it and put a fan actually inside the main body of the vehicle and something a lot smaller in there. But it was there, it came with the vehicle, it operates off the Genesis system, so I'm keeping it for now. Um, my little sink, the Rovin or Don Rovin or whatever it's called, sink, 
bit of a, an exercise in getting fittings for that. Um, it doesn't have a, an overflow, so you need an unslotted waste. And the hole for the tap is only 25 millimeters. I went to B&Q and spent a happy um, half an hour going with a, one of the assistants opening all the boxes until I found one that actually fitted in that hole. Um, it's also, as you can see, there's a fit in there. The, it's got a, a lever as well to operate the, the waste, which is quite useful. Um, but the bottle trap I used, I've actually had to recess the um, compression fitting through the wall into the, into the wall partially. Um, I thought I might have to do that and I built these walls specifically to allow me a little bit of flexibility in doing so. If this was just a sheet of 15mm um, ply or whatever, I'd have ended up with the thing sticking out the back and it wouldn't have made a nice flush fitting for the pipe work on the other side. And I'll just show you what I mean by um, specifically built these walls. The, um, the method I've chosen, whether I do the same again when I build thistle I don't know. Um, I would like to buy, I, I, if I can, I'm going to buy just standard lightweight ply without any finish on it. Um, if I can buy that for a sensible price, um, I'll be, I think I may well go with that. Because I want to try and build thistle down to, um, try and get it under three and a half tons if I can all up and then that means Karen can drive it so I will have to look at using my lighter weight materials but that's my update on my plumbing I don't think there's anything else I need to cover off at the moment I haven't fitted the tanks yet I know where they're going underneath the van um, the, the small black water tank for the uh, urine and um, I've got a, a, a tank I salvaged out of an old caravan that I bought donkeys years ago which it will fit under this van and if it doesn't fit under this van I will make it fit uh, I don't want to buy it <laughs> I don't want to buy another tank when I've got one that I can use once I've managed to persuade it to fit. One last thing to mention, earth bonding. You'll see there, it's just screwed to the wall now just to get the cable where I, <laughs> where I want it for the time being. Um, that's an earth lead, goes back to um, an earthing point on the chassis. Um, I'm going to use that to earth bond the sink. We have got mains in this vehicle. There's obviously a mains hookup, um, and there's the inverter. Um, and just like any household installation, your kitchen or whatever, pipe work or pipe runs or anything that can come in contact with human beings, ideally should be earth bonded. And I will earth bond the sink. I will earth bond the cooker. And do I need to do anything else? Uh, off the top of my head, plastic pipe work, that's isolated. Off the top of my head, I don't think I need to earth bond anything else. Um, but typically, you know, you earth bond metal pipe work. Um, typically, a household cooker is, a, is, is connected to the mains anyway, so it has an earth. But these gas cookers don't. I think I will earth bond that, but I'm definitely going to earth bond the, um, the stainless steel sink we're using. Um, and that's what that little piece of cable is for, um, just there for the future. Um, and then that there is my battery monitor, which is just conveniently tied on to the incubator feed. Um, and the incubator feed is going to uh, double up as a supply for the um, little tiny extractor fan I'm putting in the toilet, and also the water pump. Anyway, as I said earlier on, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.